Cessna, mass exodus. Here we go. Gas and departure. I gotta straighten up the nose a little bit. All right. Throttles up to 1700. Windows closed. Fuel pumps are on low. Mixture's rich. Cages are in the green. Everything looks good. Release the brake. Sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety. Rotate. Tap the brakes. Gear coming up. Climbing out of blue line. A bit windy. Nicely done. Thank you. Gaston's flight is two departing. Uh, Gaston's, we're going to make a return low pass. Gaston's. I guess those yaks just don't care about how rough it is. Leaving, uh, leaving, uh, leaving gas it is bumpy up here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we had to leave Gaston's a little bit early. Man, that is different than some asphalt. I tell you what, <laughs> that yeah. grass was like, I thought we were going to rotate it like 60. Here, Morton. Like, there was like little hills yeah. in the grass, you know? I think that was my most nervous takeoff. <laughs> it's just weird going towards trees. That's going like, towards a giant hill. Yeah. <laughs> Full of tall trees. Yeah. 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 It was a little, a little gusty. Yeah. Good night. Melbourne traffic, twin Cessna 771, Bravo, Charlie's passing over midfield 2000, entering left downwind runway 21, Melbourne. Fuel pumps on low. Fuel still on the mains. Autopilot's coming off. All I had was the audio. Looks like a nice runway. Yeah. Melbourne traffic, twin Cessna 1, Bravo, Charlie's turning left down with 2 on Melbourne. You see the runway there, Chris? Yeah. Couple planes there. Gears coming down. Gear down, 3 in the green. We got gas, undercarriage, mixtures, props are all set. Melbourne traffic, twin Cessna 771, Bravo, Charlie's turn to left base, 2 on Melbourne. Melbourne traffic, twin Cessna 1, Bravo, Charlie's turn to final, 2 on Melbourne. Man, that wind is gnarly. That crab. Gear down. Came in a little fast. Yeah. Man, I'm just catching this wind. 
There's a whole bunch of cows right there at the end of the road. Because of the wind shear, and I looked down and the boots are deflate, inflated. I was like, what is going on? So I just added speed and didn't worry about it. I don't know why the boots are inflated. I think landing is my favorite part. Because <laughs> it's over. <laughs> we, we used this runway. How long is this thing? Well, it's 4,000 feet, but like I said, I came in fast because of the gusty winds. And I didn't use full flaps because of the gusty winds, the crosswind. And I looked out and saw my boots were inflated. So I just added a little speed. Welcome to windy Melbourne, Arkansas. We need to get gas and investigate what's going on with my boots. The vacuum pumps have failed. That's, that's why up, the boots that's were... That's up the boots? Yeah, just like before. How is that even possible? We just talked about this with the people that were out there having a double vacuum pump failure. I thought they said that was totally fixed. It was. There are two brand new vacuum pumps on there. Well, guys, we'll have to look back at the flight again, but the I checked the deflate boots were not set to actuate. They were not supposed to inflate the boots. And sure enough, I looked up, both vacuum pumps have failed. That makes zero sense. All right, let's get gas and regroup. Melbourne County traffic, twin Cessna 771, Bravo Charlie's taxi and FBO to runway 21, Melbourne County. Well guys, quick fuel stop in Melbourne. Now we're going to continue the flight and hope to find smooth air at 7500. Melbourne, RK is this. A little warm here, 69 degrees. Got a 4,000 foot runway. Nice cheap gas here. From Gaston's to here, like if we would have got gas at Gaston's, which we wouldn't do anyway, just because of weight, but... Yeah. We saved like $300. Wow. Well, oddly enough, guys, we talked about the dual vacuum pump failure. The right vacuum pump is working now. Very strange. We'll check it in the run up here. Oil pressures are good. Oil temps are good. Cylinder head temps are good. The right vacuum pump is good. Melbourne, Twin Cessna 1, Bravo Charlie's departing runway 21 to the southeast. Melbourne. Melbourne. Direct crosswind now, y'all. Oh no, it's kind of quartering. It keeps swinging. Definitely a better runway than the last one. Yeah. All right, everybody's ready? Ready. Here we go, fuel pumps on low. Throttle's coming up to 1700. Mixture's going rich. Got the elements in the winds, gauges are all on the green, everything's looking good. Full power, airspeed's alive, fuel flows look good, 60, 70, 80, 90, rotate. Tap the brakes, gear coming up, welcome back to the wind. Birds off to the right. Substitute wood. <laughs> okay. Whatever is available. I will do that. <laughs> yeah. You want me to call someone? Hello? Uh, Hello. Yeah, Memphis Center. You can tell them we're five miles southeast of uh, Melbourne, Arkansas. 
Memphis Center, Twin Cessna 771, Bravo, Charlie, VFR request. Twin Cessna 711, Bravo, Charlie, go ahead. It's 771, Bravo, Charlie, Cessna 310, about 7 uh, west of the Melbourne Airport. Looking for a VFR flight following to Rome, Georgia. It's Romeo Mike Golf. We're climbing out of 5500 for 75. From our 771, Bravo, Charlie, swap 1513. 1513, one, Bravo, Charlie, thanks. Never more one, Bravo, Charlie, radar contact, one zero miles southeast of the Melbourne Airport. Walnut Ridge, Altimeter 3022, stay altitude. 3022, Bravo, Charlie's leaving 6,000 now for 7,500. 1 Bravo, Charlie, Roger, and change code for 120.07. 120.07, 1 BC. Plus, that's a 1 Bravo, Charlie's up on 20.07. I know it was short, but I'm really glad we did this. Yeah. Sorry we got weathered out early, but glad you enjoyed it. I think, you know, being in nature and being together, I, I don't know. I was talking Altitude, to you about it. 1, I, was like, I, to I go. feel like this is what we needed you know, yeah. after everything. So yeah. It was a good, good. post-funeral. Got to reminisce on Grandma and oh, yeah. family. Go down to the river. Sucks now, both times we've been in gas since it's like, well, obviously we have to go back. <laughs> so, yeah. so we can have more time. This time we were, we were supposed to have an adequate amount of time, but um, got some weather issues encroaching upon our uh, flight home to yeah. the, north, the Midwest. Wow. It, it is officially winter there. And the departure apparently. out of Gaston's too. If we'd have waited till the morning, it was supposed to be drizzling yeah, and 700 true. overcast. And Gaston's is That was in not a twin. part of our flight plan. Yeah. That was hairy enough. I wouldn't want to do that with added. And so. pop it into the clouds 700 feet. Like those ridges are about, you know. Uh, yeah, no, I'll take a pass on all that. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Which is why Lance in the 414, that's why he moved his plane, was simply because of that. Yeah, yeah he was repositioned. Four, four, five, 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 one, two, to, uh, point eight, five. what is it, back, Baxter? Yeah, the next airport over. Yeah, thank you for coming to get me. You're very welcome. Absolutely. Number seven, six, Juliet, contact. Mr. So you see the smoke five, like this fire in front of us here? Three, five, yeah. three, you see three, close to the ground, like it's like moving fast. Yeah. And then as it got a little altitude, it kind of just drifts up. Oh. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not moving as parallel. It's because the winds eight, aloft are four, four, a little four, less five, than. Five, 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 five. Than the surface winds. Point eight five for four, four, Papa. Which is why it's currently a little bit smoother. Air Baron AC3, Romeo Delta, Snack 6.2 for 5,000. You guys just got to ride the strong winds and the sun heating the earth being down to near four, the cross. Roger Mountain Home, Altimeter 3014. The wild ride. Yeah. I can see my reflection in these gauges. There was a lot of bouncing. <laughs> a lot of bouncing. Nice. Going on. I am wearing a secure, like a highly secure bra, too. It was no match. No match for those winds. Remember, 504, Charlie Delta. So the cruise Roger position. Roger I didn't get a cruise kiss. 3023. Aww. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are one hour and 38 minutes from Rome, Georgia. We are currently doing 196 knots. I found the tailwind. We did, we did get tailwind this time. Yep. Yeah. Remember when we departed last time, it said like two hours, and two, what, two and a half hours or something, and, and climbing? Yeah. Now it says uh, an hour 38. That's not bad. Not too bad. And also much more smooth. Not too jinx it. Yeah. That was why I just, I kept it at full power for the climb. Just to I get up. Yeah. still at full power. Well, yeah, but now we're at such a high altitude, full power, that's all it gives us. Down on the ground, Number full power Romeo gave Delta us almost 30 inches. 196 knots. Now we've got the weather notes. Uh, we're yeah. taking the visual and planning for 1-3. The right vacuum pump has failed again. And the boots are partially inflated. 
That's not bad, 175 knots. Would, I usually figure the boots would take off a knot or two. But we have a 15 knot tailwind. Nice. Doing 177 true airspeed. And the attitude indicator has tumbled, which we knew would happen. Our backup. But we have lots of attitude information in O1 DC. We got so much attitude. The right seat's got a ton of attitude. Yeah. Hey, wait. Back seat's got a ton the of attitude. The back seat has a ton of attitude. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you comfy back there, temperature-wise? Yes, I am super comfy. It's not bumpy, it's smooth. Temperature's just right. Yeah. And we are getting through this smoke. Well, guys, I am going to recap my Gaston's arrival because I don't think I may or may not have discussed it coming in. But when we flew through these fires that are coming up here, so there's one right there. There's two. There's three. three. I can see three Yeah, right there. so there was a ton of fires, and there's you can see this burning, bigger one up here. These fields. So I didn't have the, this camera handy to do the pano, but when we flew through those fires, it was almost IMC. It was down to about three, four mile visibility in the fires. It was so thick. And the smoky ash had put a and film, a haze on the window. And I couldn't tell it until I lined up on final because in Gaston's you kind of come off the river and you dog leg to final and then you got to get between the trees and line up. As soon as I lined up, I was in there, short, short final committed and I lost like my depth perception because that haze and the glass. I could see the trees and I knew I was lined up on the runway. I just had, didn't have that fine-tuned depth perception. Well, when I was doing my tail wheel and stuff, I got used to using your side view a bit. And then I ended up flaring just a little too high. And I just didn't quite get, I should have got a little power in but to soften it, but it was a bit of a stiff landing. Well, then we just set it all down. Landing, it's not not a problem to sit it down and you're doing a short field landing but i definitely landed harder than i had hoped to but it didn't compress the struts when i look at the dirt line on the struts you can see how far they compressed it only compressed the struts you know an inch and a half two inches so it wasn't as hard as i thought it was but it was much harder than i would have liked what i was wondering is kind of with us coming into the sun and we could like hardly see but at the end of the runway like there's a bunch of people Hanging out with cameras. Yeah. I didn't see that. That video will probably make it up on the internet before this video. Uh, just so you know. Yeah. Everybody's already there. They're like, yeah, I know. We saw it. Oh, I know. But I didn't get a chance to debrief that. There was a bunch of like. Uh, I'll put the arrival on the gas up there. There was a bunch of people, like fellow pilots that we knew. Or it knew us. And there was a decent amount. There was like uh, several different flights going on. There was a bunch of um, a group those of guys Cincinnati. from Cincinnati. There was all different what types. What is the details? Bonanzas, the Chancellors, us. There was you know, Skyhawks and. Um, I was kind of nervous coming in with the formation thing that they were doing the video. Th yeah. Those were older those, planes, those, right? That photo missions. Yeah, I think yeah. those were like 1950s yes. or something. Yes. Yeah, those were those were cool. I think we got some. They were really ones. cool. I was I was going out taking pictures and stuff. I thought that would look really neat. Yeah. But it felt kind of crazy because we were coming in and they were doing stuff and we were trying to land and I was like, what? There was a lot going on. What's going yeah. on? There was a lot going on on that arrival. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's approach twin Cessna 771 Bravo Charlie VFR is 7,500. 771 Bravo Charlie, Memphis Bridge, Memphis Altimeter 3020, cleared through the Bravo if needed. 3020, cleared through the Bravo 1BC, thanks. That was 350 off the Sierra Memphis Very Bridge. nice. Yeah. I love that. Now, and our direct got, path. We're working with the ladies today. It is Ladies Day. I'll go all up in that Bravo. Yeah, now it just makes me want to turn right just because we can. Good morning. I'm sorry for the delay. Not sure if you said you had a over five minutes. What I'm showing is the current code. Your choice of runway 18 left or 18 right. Man, it's like working. We'd like to the right. We're going to the spot there as well. Have it, have it your way. 
Oh, yeah. I'm pretend I'm Huck Finn. I want to tie a bunch of logs together and raft it. There's going to be any rival except Oscar. You, you want to go all Huck Finn? Yeah, I do. I really, really do. That's like one of those things, if I retire young enough and I still have my health, how cool would it be to put in way up in the Mississippi, like St. Louis or something, and ride the Mississippi, have camp sandbars planned out, sometimes down. going into town, Heck yeah. but float the Mississippi with your friends all the way down to like New Orleans or something. It just sounds like an epic journey. Yeah. But they, when you get down there, there the gators will get you. Like on a houseboat or like no. on sticks? Like I don't know, something that has cover, I mean. <laughs> but a pontoon? Yeah, like a pontoon type of oh, okay, situation. Okay. I'm down. I'm yeah. so down. Pontoon with some lazy boys. Bolted into it. Cranking some tunes, going down yeah. the river. There's a barge passing by that sandbar there. The mighty Mississippi. I don't even see a barge. There's a barge right by the sandbar. And there's another barge over here in the bend, just in front of the engine. There's a lot of commerce that goes up and down the Mississippi. There's another barge there, another barge up there. 12 to 1 o'clock now in 5 miles, 6,000. Bumped the camera. I swear. And I swear. By the moon in the sky. In the sky. I'll be there. To slap her in the daggum mouth next time she does that. What, peas? No, thank you, because I know I have to do my fair share. No. Bop her in the mouth for bumping the daggum camera. I tell her, don't bump the daggum camera, and then she gets upset. You just upset talking smack because her earbuds on on. Then she gets upset at me because I say, don't bump the daggum camera, and then she bumps the daggum camera. You're about to be in trouble. Three, five, two, one. Trouble. Hello, my love. <laughs> what did you do? Trouble. Nothing. I said, I tell you, don't bump the camera, and then you get aggravated because you're like, I'm always telling you not to bump the camera. And I don't tell you not to bump the camera, and you come back and you bump the camera. Why was the camera there when you knew I was climbing about the cabin? I can't move the camera. Oh. You bumped it. I didn't bump it. That never happened. I have photographic evidence. Everybody got their seatbelts on. Yes. We're 20 minutes out, 59 miles. We're going to start our descent into the Rome International Airport. This is Charlie Raider, service terminal, squawk VFR, fixed approved. Good day. What do we say the pattern? Uh, pattern was. We did. 1600. There you go. This is raging, Cajun, lunatic from Brunswick. Continuous descent from 7500 to 1600. Brought to you by VFR Flying. Dump traffic to Cessna 771 Bravo. Charlie is five miles to the west. Field over flying midfield, entering left now in runway 19 Rome. Dump traffic, Captain. Left base. One nine, touching your room. Well, this timing will be perfect. He's on the opposite downward. He's on left base for one nine. Oh. He should be over here. Perfect, yep, nine twenty six, final one nine, touching your room. I thought I just saw him. No, go, we'll extend a little south to let the twin seven overfly. Roger that, sir. Looks like we'll be pretty good. I see you there on final, and uh, I'm just uh, fixing a crossover midfield now. Field pumps are on low. Rome traffic, twin Cessna 1 Bravo Charlie is turning left down when runway 1 9 Rome. 
Rome traffic, Twin Cessna 1, Bravo Charlie is turning base to final runway 19, Rome. Little floaty. Woohoo! Rome traffic cap 926, left face, 194 south north. Rome traffic, twin Cessna 1, Bravo Charlie is turning on the crossing runway and we are clearing runway 19 at this time. Taxi into the FBL room. And we're back. Welcome back to Rome, guys. Hey, we'll is that a 310? We'll see. That's a twin Comanche, I think. Cool. All right. JJL. See you guys in a bit.